Learn how you can use Azure Migrate for your SQL migration from SQL Server to Azure SQL this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Ajith. Ajith, welcome to the show. Uh, Ajit is a program manager on the SQL team focused on migrations. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hello, Anna. Thank you for having me over. Yeah, it's uh, great to have you on the show today. We're talking about migrations, and a big thing that comes up from a lot of our customers is like, hey, I have a really large SQL Server install base. Um, how do I even approach a cloud migration? Now, Ajit, from your experience, like, what are some things we can do to help customers with this? Great question, Anna. This is true. A lot of customers have actually asked us this question. Uh, they are, these customers with a very large number of SQL servers installed are looking for an automated way to discover their SQL server instances estimate the on-premises versus the Azure cost, um, and then basically use that to build a business case. And then they want to determine the appropriate Azure SQL target, depending upon the features that they're using, and also try and figure out uh, what would be the right-sized SKU of these Azure SQL targets that they would want to move their uh, SQL instance to, which would be a good fit for their, uh, for their applications. Um, to this end, we offer Azure Migrate as our uh, at-scale agentless SQL Server discovery and assessment uh, solution. It is agentless in that there is no need to actually install an agent on each and every SQL Server instance machine. Uh, you basically uh, install an appliance. The, uh, there are appliances which can speak to you, uh, the two major uh, virtualization options we have, which includes Hi Microsoft Hypervisor and VMware uh, vSphere. In addition, you can, you can also uh, discover based on physical servers, that's it. Uh, so once you have the appropriate uh, appliance installed, give it the uh, give it the credentials that are needed, and uh, the appliance will go out there, perform the discovery, uh, figure out which machines have SQL Server installed, and based on that, uh, get you ready for the next steps, which is basically to create a business case or uh, to do the assessments. So. Um, as, as I said, the first step would be to perform discovery and uh, that's where the journey would start. Awesome, cool. Can we uh, can we take a look? Sure, so uh, let me take you to the Azure portal. Um, in Azure portal, when you uh, click through to the uh, Azure Migrate view, one of the first things you would do is create a project. And the project is nothing but a container in which you would uh, store all the information from the uh, discovery and assessment. Uh, to begin with, uh, you click on Discover, and you're basically taken to a wizard, which offers you, I mean, it guides you through the steps to install the agent. Uh, what You pick the type of virtualization that you, uh, that you have. In this particular case, I'm going to use the VMware vSphere hypervisor as an example. Uh, we will give the appliance a name. And... Once the name's created, we just click, click on Generate Key, and a project key is generated. In the meantime, you can start downloading the Azure Migrate appliance. I recommend using the zip file because it's significantly smaller, but you also have the, op uh, the option of using a .ova file, which is a full, uh, hard, full image of the virtual machine that you can then use to stand up the virtu virtual appliance in your, uh, in your uh, VMware environment. But while this is while the key is being generated, let's take a quick look at what it will look like once you have the appliance installed. So uh, once the appliance is downloaded, you get a, a PowerShell file that uh, installs the Azure Migrate appliance. And the end of the appliance installation, you get this configuration manager that opens up. The uh, we check connectivity to Azure and ensure that the time is in sync, and then the appliance is updated. Once the latest updates are available. Uh, the first step would be to register your Azure your appliance with the Azure Migrate project. To this end, you can use the key that is generated from this. It looks like this is a bit slow. So uh, the key is nothing but a long text that is created. We can then copy this key, take this over to the Azure Migrate appliance, present, provide the 
key here and click on verify. As you can see, in this case, I've already verified this. It takes a little bit of time, so I, won't, I was doing this uh, in the interest of uh, keeping the keeping to the time. Uh, after this, there is what you need to do is log in to your Azure account to proceed. Uh, the login procedure is very similar to how you'd um, authenticate yourself to Azure PowerShell in that a device code is provided to you. Uh, you authenticate using that and the appliance is now connected to your Azure account. So this is with regard to making sure your appliance is connected to Azure Migrate, at which point uh, you would provide credentials that will allow your appliance to go out and discover all the servers that are running on this vSphere uh, and also to uh, look inside those machines to try and figure out what uh, software is installed and if SQL is installed to discover more details of what is within that. So uh, you start by providing credentials that allow that will allow you to log in to the vCenter. Uh, after the, provide the um, the, the uh, coordinates of the vCenter server itself and associate the credential that you created above. Uh, once you've done this, the next step is to provide credentials for uh, logging in to SQL Windows credentials for being able to connect to the uh, the operating system itself. Uh, if there are SQL uh, accounts that you use, um, basically SQL Server authentication, you can provide the username and uh, password for those. And similarly, if there are uh, Linux machines, you can provide uh, credentials for this Linux machines as well. These uh, credentials are used to connect to these uh, connect to the discovered servers. Um, Azure Migrate will try all of these accounts one by one to find one that actually would work. And once a particular account has been found to work, then we'll continue to use that account when every time we need to connect to the, to the appropriate server or to the SQL instance as the case may be. Now that you've provided all the credentials, all you need to do is click on Start Discovery and wait for about 24 hours. Uh, over the course of the 24 hours, the appliance will basically connect to your SQL instance, determine your configuration details, and also start collecting uh, information that it will use later for business uh, case building or for uh, doing the, uh, the uh, creating the SQL assessments. Awesome. That's great, Ajit. Thanks for showing us that. Okay, so now that we're feeling a little bit more confident that we have a tool we can use to assess at scale or kind of migrate at scale, how do we go about building a business case to present to our team or leadership that you know we're going to migrate? Great question, Anna. And this uh, Azure Migrate provides the option to actually build a business case. It's a, a simple method where uh, once you go in there, there are just a few data points that you need to provide to get started. Provide a name for your business case, a target location. This is basically the location to which you uh, propose moving your uh, your resources to in Azure. Um, you can also provide appropriate discount settings uh, and then hit business case. Uh, let me take you to one that I've already created so that it's easier to uh, follow through. This is what a, a created, a, a completed business case would look like to you. Uh, you can find out what your savings are going to be. Uh, Azure Migrate gen generates this by trying for, by estimating your on-premises costs based on the servers that we have discussed, discovered. It also estimates what the Azure cost would look like once you move into Azure. And based on that, it's able to tell you what is uh, an approximate IaaS um, costs, basically virtual machines and the usage of those. And it's also able to tell you pass costs based on uh, pass resources that your uh, source sources are uh, qualifying for. Since most of our customers do not perform migration in one shot and it is it takes time and uh, they are migrated as a certain percentage over time, uh, we are able to also present you a estimated uh, cash flow where you can look at both the uh, current, the future and the net cash flow to understand how your uh, expenses will look like over the course of the next three years, right? All of these in terms of what the percentage of conversion would be and uh, how you are looking at the, uh, I mean, the estimate, sorry, the assumptions that are used to create the estimates can be edited under edit assumptions. Uh, in particular, we, you can also see what the Azure hybrid benefit is going to bring in as savings. Um, also down here, you can see that there are additional discovery insights which talk about uh, how your est current estate is being utilized, whether there are any servers which look ready for decommissioning based on the fact that they are not actually being used. Um, and if there are any that we are unable to dis uh, 
return appropriate information for you will see that they're marked as unknown and you uh, you can go back and look at your discovery to make sure that those servers are accessible for us to perform uh, to obtain appropriate details and then fill this out once you have all this information ready you're in a better place uh, to be able to talk to your stakeholders and uh, take a more informed data driven decision uh, to move to azure migrate so to move to azure awesome that's great okay so we now have some confidence that we can migrate at scale with Azure Migrate. We have a business case using this new capability that you just showed us. The next thing to do would be to figure out how to assess and migrate all of these instances, right? Um, can you give us a little quick into how that works? Great. Uh, so once you have this, uh, um, Azure Migrate has the ability to create an assessment for uh, SQL. You go in to the create assessment, uh, pick a bunch of servers that you want to assess. Uh, just waiting for the, yeah. so the, as a first step, you will pick, you'll select the servers that you want to assess. All the servers that had been discovered and we have been obtain, able to obtain information from are listed here. Select the appropriate servers. If you want to create a new group, you can uh, give it a name here. create a, give it an assessment name, and uh, essentially you're now ready to go create an assessment. Once the assessment is created, uh, this is what you'd expect to see. Uh, Azure Migrate will do three things for you. One, it will check your, based on the feature usage that you have, it'll figure out what are the Azure SQL targets that you can migrate your, tar your source SQL instance to. Um, it will, check the appropriate, uh, it'll, sorry, it'll give you a right-sized SKU recommendation. Uh, it'll give you, a, a, I mean, a sizing recommendation for the target that you're choosing. Thirdly, it will look at all the uh, possible targets and based on a migration strategy that you picked when you created the, uh, the, the uh, assessment, it will recommend a target. So the first view that you're seeing here is essentially all the uh, recommended targets for your SQL instances. In my case, I had 12 servers that I had assessed. That I found 15 SQL instances with uh, 2,673 user databases. Also notice I had one failover clustered instance and one availability group that was discovered. Um, we have recommendations for all 15 of them. There are 11 which are recommended to be moved to SQL Server on Azure VM, three uh, that would be a good fit for Azure SQL Managed Instance, and one for Azure SQL DB. You can also see what the monthly cost estimate would be based on the uh, based on the current recommendation that is being shown here. Clicking through, you can get details of all the SQL instances, and in here, uh, you can if you find that a particular SQL instance is not ready for a certain target, you are also able to try to determine what are the uh, feature compatibility issues that might be preventing you from migrating to that particular target. In this case, uh, my SQL, SQL instance happened to have more user databases than is currently supported by Azure SQL Managed Instance. Therefore, this uh, instance is marked as not ready for managed instances, but it is ready for VM. Uh, so apart from this, uh, Azure, Azure Migrate will also provide you a recommended deployment size and configuration. Uh, also, you will be provided a suggested migration tool. Uh, in this case, Azure Data Studio, because this is, a, this is ready for an instance to be a migration. Uh, there are some machines where we were unable to connect to the SQL instance, but we are still able to offer you a server migration as an alternative in those machines. So essentially, this, uh, the, with this, you basically have a full plan all the way from knowing which are the SQL servers that you have to knowing what the uh, what, what your uh, savings are going to look like as you move into Azure and also determine what are the appropriate targets for your SQL instances and what tools you will use for migrating the SQL instance to Azure. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, Ajith. I, I've learned a lot. You know, what's been really cool is that we've we're really at a place where Azure Migrate becomes your one-stop shop for everything related to your SQL migration. So it's great to see that. It's great that you just showed us all the demos with all these great examples. Uh, to our viewers, we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. Uh, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know where you're migrating to. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Mm -hmm.